As we approach bird nesting season, there's no better time to put up a bird box and the RSPB have actually declared it National Bird Box Week to try and encourage you to do so. So I've actually been out and bought two new bird boxes, so I'm going to put them up today. I'm also going to clean out my original bird box where I have blue tits that like to nest each year. I'll give you some hints and tips on how to position and choose the right bird box for you. Watching the birds on my lawn is one of my favourite things to do and I'm sure many of you also like to watch them in your garden. It's really important that we encourage them as much as we can by putting out food, water and encourage them to nest and make residence in your garden. They bring so many benefits. Just watching them is really relaxing. You learn so much from them and also they keep the pests at bay. The blue tits in particular time their nesting to coincide with the hatching of all of the caterpillars which is the predominant food source for their chicks and also i remember seeing the long-tailed tits um, picking off all of the black fly from my beans last summer and that was just a joy to watch so it's really important that we encourage them into our gardens as much as we can here i've picked up two different types of nest boxes and there are different styles for different birds this one here has a very open front fascia and this is suitable for robins and also wrens I believe. They don't really like the entrance hole, obviously the robin has quite a, a round body so um, this is its preferred nesting choice um, but I do find that they're quite tricky to encourage into bird boxes. I find that they are one of those birds that really do prefer a natural environment so if you do have robins using a robin box then well done. This one here you'll all be familiar with, um, it's your traditional sort of nest box, um, it's got a nice slated roof and this is popular for birds such as blue tits, great tits, uh, possibly sparrows as well and this one actually comes with a different facing. So this here is actually a different sized hole to this one because different birds prefer different entrance holes and it's worth checking on the RSPB website because they'll give you um, good advice on which size hole to use for which type of bird. And you may notice this has a metal ring around the outside and I would always try and find a bird box with one of these if you can or if not buy the metal plate separately. You can easily find them online if you search for metal bird box plate. Um, these are really important because what they do is they stop predators from getting into the bird box which happens a lot more than you might think. Animals such as your magpies, your crows, even woodpeckers, um, squirrels, they will all predate the chicks or and or the eggs inside so having this metal entrance um, stops them from getting in uh, so I really recommend that you try and find one with one of those. So I do have a pair of blue tits that nest every year in the bird box that I have just above my bench here and I have seen them flying around the area. Uh, they never stray too far even in winter so I'm hoping that they're going to return again for spring but it's really important that I clean out that box to make sure all of the bedding from last spring is removed and it's nice and fresh and clean for them to have a nice fresh start for their chicks this spring. So um, I'm going to go bring it down now and clean it out. When you're cleaning out an existing bird box, all you're going to be doing is removing the nesting material and then we're going to pour some boiling hot water through the nest box to sort of clean it through and hopefully get rid of any nasties that may be lurking. You don't want to be using any flea powders or any insecticides or anything like that. So I've got the kettle on to boil and now it's time to see what's inside, which is always a little bit exciting because the way that they make their nests can be so beautiful sometimes. Um, there might be a grim discovery. We don't know if we'll find a baby skeleton in there. I'm not sure. So uh, I'm going to put a glove on and um, we'll see what's inside. You might also find sometimes um, bumblebees can create nests um, in bird boxes as well. And from first sightings, it looks like they've all fledged. So there's nothing grim in there. You see lots of feather. Now let's have a look, see what they've made their nest out of. And there we have it, <laughs> lovely bird nest made, it looks like mostly from moss, lots of moss layers in there, some little straw pieces and lots of feathers there on the top. <laughs> How sweet is that? 
So I'll be um, discarding of this, popping it probably in the compost bin. So it is a little bit damp. You can see actually the moss underneath is still quite green. So it must be a little bit moist in there, but the top layers are very dry. So hopefully the wood isn't rotting, which I'm going to check now. Can you hear the, that was the blue tip. There he is. I best be quick and put it back up again. <laughs> it does look like there's a little bit of damp wood in there, but um, it's not rotting. So fingers crossed, it should still last another year. There's a bee. One thing that is worth doing if you do get a new bear box is um, to waterproof the top of the wood. You can actually use a piece of felt that you'd use on your shed roof just to let any rain sort of run off so it doesn't seep into the wood. This has got a nice piece here on the hinge so that the, wood, the water isn't going to get down there. But um, I think it's still got plenty of life left in it so I'm going to... <laughs> put the... Can you hear that? He's really not happy about me being here. <laughs> okay, well, there's a few bits down in the corner still. So I'm just going to get a stick and clean them out then get some water and pour it through. Well, the bird box is now empty. I'm just waiting for the kettle to boil to pour some hot water through it. But um, blue tits are actually quite an interesting bird because they're known to pick up lavender and line it with the nest to use it as a sort of like an antibacterial and that should hopefully sort of clean out the nest box as well. So um, maybe I should leave a few sprigs of lavender below the nest box site in case they want to use them. When you're looking for a location to site your bird box, the key things to remember are that it's somewhere out of direct sunlight, so you don't want it to be facing south where it gets the sunlight for all of the day, and somewhere hopefully quite sheltered where it's not going to be in high winds and it's not going to be rocking around quite a lot. I find that my bird box being over there in a north easterly facing position um, is quite popular because it um, doesn't get all that direct sunlight and they've also got a clear flight path there's nothing blocking their route entrance into the hole now for this bird box which is the 28 millimeter hole so it's actually a little bit larger than the one that i have on my blue tip box because i want to try and um, entice a different type of bird here to nest so hopefully we might get a great tit nesting in here obviously i don't want them to be competing too much for territory and for food as well so um, i'm going to position this i think on the side of my shed you generally want to position your boxes between two and four meters. Um, the three meter mark is very good for blue tits. Um, robins, however, do actually prefer a much lower nest site. So they'll actually generally nest below two meters. I find quite often below four feet, three feet even. They really do nest quite low down. Uh, so we're going to go for about the two meter mark here on the side of my shed. And um, this is facing the wildlife corner where I try not to disturb the area too much anyway. So if they do turn out to nest in here, then I'll make sure that I'm leaving them well alone. There we go. Hopefully we'll get some residents in the next couple of months. You may remember when I was cutting this hedge back a few months ago behind my shed, it's really reduced now, but I've kept all of this thick ivy because, well, for one reason I love it, but so do the birds and particularly the robins. And robins love to nest low down in ivy and with an open facing box. And I haven't had them nest in a box before, but I know that they've already nested last year in my seating area and also up by the gate, both areas with thick ivy. So if there's a good place as any, it's gonna be right here. <laughs> so um, unlike the blue tits that will fly straight into that narrow hole, um, the robins that have an open facing box, um, they're more likely to want a bit of coverage so we can hide the box behind all of this ivy and they can hop about between the branches before they go into the nest box. 
and also with this thick ivy it's going to protect it from the sun and from the rain but it is facing a north easterly position so it's not going to get all of that direct sunlight whereas if I faced it that way on the other side um, yeah don't face your nest boxes south <laughs> so um, yes I think we're going to put it on that tree right there um, nestle it in all of the ivy and put it about there see how that does I really hope that we get some birds nesting in those new bird boxes this spring but if not I won't be too disheartened because I know that sometimes it can take the birds a little while to sort of gain the trust of a new nest box to find it and to become used to it so if not this year then perhaps next year they'll be successful. I would really love it if you went out and put up a bird box if you haven't already got any up in your garden ready for spring and tell me what's your favourite garden bird? For me it's got to be either the robin or the long-tailed tit. They are just so cute. I love the way that the long-tailed tits fly around in groups of five or six and they'll just flutter all between the trees and they just look so cute like little uh, acrobatics in the trees. I'd also love to know if you've got any regular residents that nest in your garden and tell me what they are because I just love to know all about different birds and different birds around the world as well. Thank you very much for joining me today. Take care and I'll see you again real soon. <laughs>